Hello and welcome to Share Parents' webinar series today on digital transformation. Great seeing you tune in from around the globe and I hope everyone is happy and healthy. I'm eager to get started. It's going to be another great webinar and uh, with someone I highly respect and admire. The purpose of these webinars is to educate, inspire and empower global leaders like you to help modernize boards and ultimately make boards more efficient. So thank you for being here. Our expert speakers bring a wide range of current leadership and board related topics to the table. And shortly you have the privilege to spend some time with digital transformation expert, Robin Gordon. And she will reveal how and why developing a strategy that puts people and data at the center will provide greater success. My name is Red, I'm the event manager for Shea Parency and your webinar moderator. Before we begin, let me introduce you to our webinar host, Shea Parency. Less than 15% of companies globally use any type of board technology today. That's a post COVID note. Shea Parency's philosophy is to make an impact here and increase the efficiency and effectiveness of board and uh, governance operations for businesses and doing so through their complete user-friendly and cost-effective digital platform. Shapeparency is not only a new breed of technology, but a disruptor in the board industry. So it's a digital platform with all the features your board needs to thrive, including modern digital security, board education partners, and an ever-growing series of board effectiveness measurement tools. We are excited about being part of creating the future of board and board operations. We are also excited about you being part of this journey. And like our be uh, founder Ben would say, excited about making boards and board operations less boring. If you have not yet experienced Shea Parency, you can take a free 14 day test drive, no credit card required. I will give you a few more details on this later. Two quick notes before we begin. Write your questions in the Q&A section, and you can do this as we go. Our goal is to answer all your questions at the close of the presentation. But if we do run out of time, we will make sure to follow up with you after the webinar. This webinar is also being recorded, and you will receive a link to the recording and Robin's presentation deck via email. And just give it a few days, uh, of course, after the webinar ends. Make sure you have not opted out of receiving emails from Shea Parency. In that case, you would not receive the follow-up email. So just check your email prefer uh, preferences. Now I'd like to present today's speaker, Robin Gordon. It was hard to narrow down this introduction to a few bullet points, but feel free to connect with Robin following the webinar to learn more about her. <clears throat> so here we go. As MetLife's Chief Data and Analytics Officer, Robin manages MetLife's enterprise data priorities across strategy, service and operations, business analytics, and governance. She has a vast experience understanding digital transformation, building dynamic teams, and connecting human and digital experiences to reimagine business and operation, operating models. And this is all while driving digital innovation. Previously, Robin worked with Blackstone, where she was the Chief Information Officer. She was the Chief Data Officer for CoreLogic, and she has led teams responsible for data technology and customer analytics at Dun & Bradstreet and several insurance companies. She holds a Bachelor of E-Commerce, Economics and Information Systems, with a distinction in business management degree from the University of South Africa and an MBA from the University of Texas at Austin, Macomb's uh, School of Business. Robin has been an advocate for diversity and women in technology throughout her nearly 30 year career. Here is Robin Gordon, Digital Transformation, the Hope, the Hype, the Reality. So welcome Robin to our virtual stage. Thank you so much, Red, and thank you all for, for joining today. I'm looking forward to this conversation, and it couldn't be done on a better platform, just in terms of uh, thinking about boards and digital transformation, and I think your parents has done an excellent job of helping us to do some digital transformation in the board space. 
So today I want to talk about uh, some of the misnomers about digital transformation, uh, the definitions of digital transformation, and how it relates to uh, board engagement uh, and, and management and oversight. Uh, I will go to the next slide. Uh, so I'm going to spend a notable amount of time talking about digital transformation, what it is and what it's not. It's important because even as board members and executives, we have to get our heads around this concept in order to lead through the demands on our companies. History continues to repeat itself in tackling these opportunities incorrectly, missing the value and not seeing the true impact of our capital investments. So I do want to spend some time on just understanding digital transformation, and then we'll connect it to uh, the board and responsibilities of the board. All right, so what is digital transformation? Often we focus on technology and we talk about the various technologies that are sort of uh, du jour of the moment, cloud, artificial intelligence, mobile, blockchain. Uh, cloud and mobile have a lot of attention today uh, and they end up in conversations at the board or executive level where we're not really attributing that technology to the value that it can deliver to our company. These technologies are important in the so I'm not trying to dismiss them in any way. Uh, and they, they do form the basis and foundation of digital transformation. Another misguided focus is on digitizing processes. So I want to spend a little bit of time on that as well, which is more of an incremental change to make a manual function more automated or electric. Electronic, sorry. Not a bad aspiration, but also not digital transformation. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the difference between creating digital processes versus digital transformation. But suffice it to say that digital transformation is not solely the purpose of a technology team. So, what is the hope? Digital transformation will make my company nimble and give it competitive advantage. This is absolutely true. There's a vast opportunity in digital transformation. So much continues to change and we have to adopt to digital experiences to meet expectations and stay relevant. So the hope is true. But what about the hype? The hype that a technology project will transform and create value is, is the problem. We often uh, think about technology alone without change to our business and our processes. What's interesting is we keep propagating this emphasis on technology as if it were a silver bullet. Move to the cloud, often seen as an opportunity to save costs. Well, that's true, but that value will soon disappear if that is the only reason to move to the cloud. Implement new software like ERP or CRM with the hope that it will improve processes but then the same manual processes is brought along with the new complex technology, making jobs actually more complex than they were prior to the implementation of the new technology. Another really interesting uh, technology that sort of fell into the hype was robotics process automation. It was touted as the ticket to greater automation. We could take our uh, complex processes, automate them, and be done with them. Uh, but what we realized was if we didn't have consistent repeatable processes, robotic process automation actually became very complicated and expensive. And so a lot of companies either only saw minimal improvement in their process automation or scrapped projects altogether. So we want to make sure that as we think about digital transformation, we don't get caught up in the hype. Uh, and instead, we, we really identify where the hope is created. So the digital trend, the fallacy. This problem we keep repeating is what is referred to as the digital fallacy. The technology is the sole ingredient to making digital transformation successful. Left to the technology department, digital transformation will fail. This, this is motherhood and apple pie. We've known this for, for decades, and yet we continue to propagate it. Digital transformation, however, will succeed when there is an adoption of a digital mindset 
in the culture of an organization and a shift in the business model to be more digitally focused. And that's what I really want to focus on today. So what is digital transformation? It's a set of ingredients for successful for successfully transforming your business, which includes technology, of course, but also incorporates integration, people, data, and processes. Let's talk about each of these ingredients uh, uh, in, on their own. Technology. Technology is an enabler and a really important part of digital transformation. Choosing the right technology should not be underestimated or overlooked. Integration. This piece helps to bring the technology to life. If technology isn't integrated, you don't have true automation. Uh, we've seen this before. Digitizing forms only to have a process downstream require a paper copy doesn't lead to the shift in value we would expect. The people part of this. The role of people is multifaceted. They need to be uh, bought into this culturally. They'll also need to be the ones setting expectations for change. They can be empowered to champion transformation going forward and will need to change their own behaviors and approach to make all these ingredients become more effective. Data. As you heard in my background, I'm, I've been in data for most of my career. Uh, this is my personal favorite part of uh, digital transformation and uh, continues to be a sort of forgotten component to digital transformation. Yet it plays a crucial role in making sure that the technology and processes come to life. Imagine Amazon or Netflix without data, or think about your online baking experience, and imagine if the data shown was wrong or incomplete or outdated. Nothing's going to work and come together without data being available and, and accurate. I recently worked with a company that wanted to uh, bring digital transformation and create an online experience for their customers, whether that was being more automated in their IVR or actually having a true web uh, service function for their customers. They had all of the right technology, they implemented the systems and the tooling to get that done. Uh, they had the, the right level of trained employees answering phones uh, with the IVR. They had the right level of support with their uh, website, yet they didn't have the data. They hadn't brought together all of the customer data. So it still required customers to navigate to their own products, to self-identify themselves, uh, and to, to tell the company who they were and what they wanted to do versus the company gathering information and insight about their customers so that they could preempt and start to uh, ensure that the customer was navigated through the various experiences. So data needs to be incorporated into digital transformation and cannot be overlooked. The next ingredient is process. This is the piece that we've been talking about for many, many years, if not decades. Process reimagining allows the technology, the data, the integration, and the people to move forward and evolve. But how many times have you seen old processes with new talk technology or a technology implementation that hoped the process would change but didn't actually happen. I think that's been a common theme for many, many years is I'm going to implement a technology and that's going to force fit a change of process. But that's back to front. We have to think about our process first and then the technology that will best suit a reimagining of the process. To bring this all together, uh, I, I wanted to talk about a, a recent experience I've been to a government website process um, in queries. And before I could complete my transaction, I needed a pin. One that was mailed to me through the postal service and arrived two weeks later. This was a process and a set of uh, um, capabilities that needed to be reimagined to capture the full value of the online experience. So they had some of the ingredients, but they didn't have all of the ingredients. And so it didn't create the value that was expected from digital transformation. Robin, right, so if I can reality. Back, Robin, if I can come in and interject just a second, could we do a sound check? It's not so clear your sound right now. Do you have a way to just uh, 
I, I don't necessarily, but um, maybe speak a little bit closer to the microphone. Yeah, see if that helps it. for a second. Does Thank that you help so at all? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. So the reality. I'm being repetitive, but the only way we achieve the hope of digital transformation is if we lead with people, process, and data meeting it by the integration of capable technologies. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what the world thinks about digital transformation in space. So Gartner forecasts that worldwide IT spending will exceed $4 trillion this year. It actually works out to be somewhere around $4.5 trillion. And a good portion of that IT spend will be focused on digital transformation. 70% of organizations have a digital transformation strategy or are working on one. The IMF predicts that 65% of the world's GDP will be digitized, digitized this year. And roughly half of 2000 CEOs surveyed are relying on information technology to create competitive advantage. And this is an interesting one and related to the conversation we're gonna have in a couple of minutes, but 95% of board meetings moved virtual uh, during the pandemic versus 5% pre-pandemic. This is informa interesting information because it's so important that we start to appreciate how relevant digital transformation continues to be for us and how difficult it is to truly make it successful. So now let's talk about a couple of examples. I'll give you a few that are really, really good and I'll give you a few that are not so good. Uh, I think we can all attest that Amazon has demonstrated digital transformation probably better than any other company uh, in our history. They've done it in a couple of different ways. So they've taken an online bookstore and moved to an infrastructure provider. Brilliant transition. And this is a really good example of where digital transformation done right actually helps us create new business models and new opportunities for the company. Who would have thought back in the day that a bookstore could become an infrastructure provider. And yet they dominate in that space now, uh, which was not even a space uh, a couple of years ago. Not only have they shown digital transformation in that regard, but think about the experience as we engage with Amazon. They have connected their systems with their vendors and their warehouses to innovate in a way that allows us to get products seamlessly, quickly, effectively. I mean, I get so frustrated now when I go to stores because I get just a small selection of products, oftentimes not in the shape or size that I want. Uh, and I revert back to Amazon and go and, uh, and purchase my products there. So oftentimes uh, that's the case. And it's because they've created this digital experience that's integrated it has the right processes, it has the right people, uh, and is, um, has the right technology. Another really good example of uh, excellent digital transformation is Marriott. So Marriott has used their data to create a better customer experience. They gather data about uh, your, your stays, where you stay, which rooms you stay in, uh, and they make sure that that gets translated into a personalized experience for you. So I personally have a, a, a real problem with getting into hotel rooms and having it uh, a noisy room, either close to the elevator or on a lower flow, floor or near you know, some common areas or ice machines and vending machines. The Marriott has put together a digital transformation uh, initiative that allows them to track what sort of rooms I like and make sure that every time I check into an area, I'm at the very, I'm at the very end of a uh, of a hall, the furthest away from any mechanical noises, and at the top floor. And that's just a really great example of how they brought a lot of 
these ingredients together to make the experience excellent. The bad, there are, not, there are many, many examples of that. Um, Ford, a couple of years ago, decided that they wanted to create a more um, mobile experience uh, integrated with their cars. So they created the Ford Smart Mobility. Unfortunately, they did it in a way that separated that capability and that business from the core of who Ford was. So they, um, they culturally distanced themselves from the organization and didn't have the amount of collaboration and integration to the existing processes that allowed them to make be successful. And actually, they attribute a lot of the, um, uh, the downfall of the CEO at that time uh, to some of the mistakes made in this digital transformation. And then there's a big box uh, retail firm that has a great experience in their retail stores, but an awful experience in their online shop. And again, when you think, when you, when you actually look at the two scenarios, their online environment is completely separate from their retail environment. And so they, they aren't able to carry over the, uh, the experience, the culture, the vibe that you get in the retail stores with their online stores. And it creates not only just the satisfaction of the customer, but it also creates uh, confusion uh, because the, the brand is not consistent. So now let's transition to what we need to look out for in digital transformation to avoid hurdles and address the multifacets of this opportunity effectively. So we're going to go through a series of challenges, and then this is all going to connect to um, board and, and what we need to think about from a board standpoint. So challenge number one has been the pandemic. Uh, and interestingly, I call it a challenge, uh, although one might think of it as an opportunity because the pandemic has really made us uh, accelerate our need to connect digitally uh, and electronically and think more about uh, the digital experiences that we have both within our own organization and other organizations. And yet it may have caused technology to, to lead versus the other ingredients uh, having taken a step back. And as a result, we may have purchased too aggressively a uh, software and infrastructure that now leads us with too much, or we may have overlapping capabilities that are poorly integrated. And worst case scenario, stopgap measures to get ourselves uh, into better digital experiences may have created security vulnerabilities. So we now have a situation where we've got to sort of backtrack a little bit uh, and make sure that we've got a better integration process uh, that we don't have confusing, overlapping uh, technology capabilities. But you know, another interesting piece to consider here is it also may have exposed weak or outdated areas uh, within our organization, putting pressure on CEOs and other executives to initiate change efforts in a rush. And so there is a big focus right now in the digital space in looking at how we can bring the, the pandemic uh, rush to digital transformation together in an effective way. The next challenge is culture. So this is one of my favorite ideas, the, the quote here. Um, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. It's such an interesting idea and so much harder than it really sounds. I was talking to a very large old company recently and they were highlighting cultural challenges in their workforce. Sentiments like my tenure should dictate my promotion. If, I, if you don't know the product, then you can't add any value. Our processes protect us and mustn't be challenged. All of these sentiments a signal of a need to unlearn and rethink uh, our, our environment. A great uh, example of unlearning process is Texas Roadhouse restaurants. That may seem like a strange uh, example to give in a digital transformation, uh, but it's fascinating to watch how they have unlearned and rethought through the pandemic 
creating, uh, moving from a restaurant environment to creating a, a place where people could come and get provisions and takeouts and engage with their community in a different way. Additional take on culture is that fear can get created when automation initiatives are started. This idea that my job is gonna go away because we're automating processes. And that fear has uh, existed and, and perpetuates our, our environments quite a lot. But one of the interesting things to think about and uh, in terms of having an impact, a positive impact on the culture is when we do digital transformation, let's start with the most boring tedious tasks and automate those, allowing employees to spend their time on more valuable uh, just tasks. Because let's be honest, machines don't mind the boring tasks. And this doesn't create fear in the employees, this actually creates empowerment. So there's a lot of things that we can do in our culture to uh, improve the adoption of, of uh, digital transformation, but it does require us to you know, get out of our headspace uh, in the past. The next challenge, and this is one that's um, you know, is, is actually a pretty significant challenge is uh, the notion of legacy. Uh, and by legacy, I mean legacy technology, legacy processes, the legacy products, uh, legacy mindset, as we just covered, uh, legacy customers. Uh, um, in one of the, the roles that I had years ago, most of our customers were large, uh, old financial institutions. And no matter how much we wanted to innovate, we were dictated in our pace by the pace of our customer's ability to adopt our solutions. And so we've got to think about how our customers uh, appreciate digital transformation as well. All this creates a great deal of complexity. A couple of things to take away from this though. There are ways to integrate build abstraction layers, et cetera, without fully remediating the legacy environments and solutions. And we can't ignore legacy or work around it. That doesn't work and can cause confusion, cultural bias between the haves and have nots, and doesn't ultimately take care of the legacy, which will continue to drag us down. Uh, and again, I'm not talking specifically about technology, it can be legacy in, in many different facets. The pace of change. Digital transformation should be seen as a launching pad for continuous improvement, not a one and done deal. So that's kind of going slow. We don't, we don't want to go slow and we want to go fast. At the same time, we don't want to go so fast uh, that we get ourselves into a speed bubble and can't uh, be appropriately responsive. Changing and adapting business models requires a different level, oh, sorry, um, so in terms of the pace of change, perfection is the enemy of good. So we also don't want to get so fixated on uh, being absolutely perfect, you know, getting rid of all of our technology, having the most beautiful cloud environment, uh, reimagining all of our processes and not dealing with some of them uh, that are challenging, that we take so long to implement change that by the time that change is implemented, something new has come into the marketplace. Going too fast is as challenging as going too slow, but too slow may result in permanently lost opportunities. And this is where I think this is such a fascinating uh, display of uh, sort of how companies have evolved over the last um, hundred years. And when you think about the companies that we valued even just a short period of time ago, I mean, look at 2017 there, there's, and versus 2021, there are some there that have been um, persistent, but a lot of companies have come and gone. Uh, and there are plenty of white uh, 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 papers and uh, business cases that talk about you know, the challenges companies have had in that evolution. Uh, and I think more and more so that evolution is dictated by our ability to adapt to digital transformation. All right, so what is this, uh, what is the board connection here? Uh, and I want to make sure, as I noted, I did spend a lot of time on digital transformation and just talking to 
explain sort of my perspective on what digital transformation is. Because I think it's the, the right foundation to then focus on what do we do at the board level? If we do digital transformation correctly, we should be able to introduce new business models and navigate the organization in very different ways than we might have done before. And very evident that we have to do this um, from the, the prior slide, because if we don't, we might not be relevant uh, in the future. And so the, the board plays an important role in helping to govern uh, and direct uh, the, the organization in its uh, changing business models. So what do we require in the board to ensure that we can be responsive to the needs of uh, digital transformation and do it right so we capture the value? Uh, there's tons of information about board diversity, and this is such an important topic that we shouldn't overlook. Uh, and there's a myriad of reasons why board diversity is so important. And all the benefits that are achieved when we have representation from different backgrounds and experiences is important and relevant. And leading through successful digital transformation is one more reason to have board diversity. Just as we wouldn't want board members to not have financial experience, so too we should seek a board that has experience in digital transformation. This does pose challenges in what is traditionally thought in the board, and we may need to pursue candidates that might have less experience or come from less traditional companies and backgrounds, which is not a bad thing, it continues to foster that uh, diversity of thought and diversity of perspective. But not just taking uh, technical backgrounds into consideration, but backgrounds in all sorts of areas that will be needed to effectively uh, manage the digital transformation. Areas like change management, risk management, uh, human resources, even ESG are things that we should consider. And contemplating what it is that we have to transform. Uh, is it our supply chain? Is it our digital or our online presence? Uh, will also help to inform what types of those skills we need in the board. Lastly, where there are changing business models, there are also non-traditional threats and opportunities. So this is an important area for a board to understand and anticipate and, and contemplate uh, in, in helping to manage and govern the organization. The next area of focus is board and executive alignment. This is an interesting topic and one that is important to recognize may exist more broadly than just the topic of today, digital transformation. Ensuring alignment of the goals, outcomes, and metrics of any large change initiative is important. Digital transformation may cause a slightly higher degree of misalignment because of some of the inaccurate notions around what digital transformation is and can do for a company. Board objectives about value creation and growth should be set with the board. I was reading one research that indicated digital transformation should yield something upwards of 20% improvement in growth performance. Yet many CEOs will target closer to a 5% uh, growth target. So this is a good discussion for the board to have and making sure that we're setting the, the right expectations and the right goals uh, across the organization. Board culture shift. So we saw a significant and rapid shift by boards to adopt a virtual position in the pandemic. This is something that I noted uh, a few uh, slides ago. Many boards struggled with this shift, not having the right tools, unable to collaborate, difficulty accessing materials. Even just that, that notion of feeling uncomfortable that now I'm in a screen, I have to read my uh, documents online, I don't know how to do the technology stuff that's required. Um, all of that really had an impact on how effectively boards came together. In the world of digital, the board needs to adapt their culture and set an example by becoming more proficient and adaptable to digital experiences. I had a chuckle when I was uh, prepping for this, this uh, webinar. I was reading a few articles and they said, hey, 
You know, the worst thing in a digital transformation initiative would be that the CEO is talking about um, artificial intelligence while the frontline staff are still using facts to communicate with customers. Uh, and that sort of uh, dichotomy can be expressed even at the board level, uh, making sure that the board is technology savvy, integrated, and experiencing digital uh, experiences, shifting the culture, setting the expectation. Uh, it, it can't just come from the rank and file. It has to be top down and bottom up. Gaining alignment culturally will help speed up adoption, demystify the impacts, and ultimately help to accelerate the company's ability to adapt, improve, and see future opportunities in the digital space. Now, I did talk a little bit about, in the early uh, discussion, about digitizing processes versus digital transformation. And I want to capture that a little bit more because I do think that the transformation, or not the transformation, but the change that we had to go through during the pandemic with the boards having to switch to virtual was an example of a digital process improvement, not necessarily digital transformation. But sometimes multiple digital uh, process improvements can actually affect the digital transformation. And so I don't want to allude that just moving from uh, you know, on, on site, uh, on prem uh, discussions with paper documents in a board setting to a Zoom call with electronic documents is digital transformation. In my view, based on what we've talked about, that isn't. Uh, but I think it's a, an important shift for really, the boards to start to make uh, to, to get to uh, an appreciation for digital transformation. All right, so in conclusion, uh, I, I want to just encapsulate what we talked about. Digital transformation does allow companies to thrive. It can't be a digital, uh, or sorry, a technology driven strategy. It requires top down support and alignment. Incremental change will not achieve the promise. It can help to progress, but it can't achieve the promise. And the power of digital transformation is the shift in business models and way of doing business, not just in the underlying platform or, and in capabilities. So that's, uh, that's the conclusion, uh, conclusion to my discussion. Uh, thank you so much for, for your time uh, and we will open it up for questions. Great, thank you so much, Robin. If you wanna uh, stop sharing so that you and I can um, answer some of the questions here in more of a better view. Um, and we're gonna jump into that right away. I'm gonna see here. So the first question here that I see, Robin, you mentioned many great points on the digital transformation links directly to the board. What are the top questions you wish a board would ask you or any CDO or data analytics officer regarding an enterprise-wide digital transformation initiative? Well, it's uh, very, very fortuitous that that question was asked because I'm actually uh, talking to my board next week uh, on this very topic. Uh, and it's it's interesting because I think we we face a very similar challenge to what I outlined in that we're very technology focused in our digital transformation and we've left off to a certain degree the the data elements uh, related to it. So I'm very hopeful that as we get into the discussion, we're going to talk about how we can leverage data and process improvement to, to change our approach with uh, with our digital experiences. But I think it's more about how we inculcate data into our culture and start to infuse the, the use of data in how we operate. What decisions should we be making through data versus through intuition? How do we start to be more fact-based and inform ourselves about the world that we live in so that we are uh, making rapid decisions uh, based off of a lot of information versus slow decisions based off of intuition and just small decisions. Uh, 
uh, when I was with Blackstone, one of the things that I thought was so fascinating was the flow of information. And at first I was a little overwhelmed by it because I thought this is just like data overload. Anybody everywhere in the organization would pass information along because the idea was I need to have as much information as humanly possible, both good and bad, to make the investment decisions that I need to make. And I have to make those decisions super quickly in order to be uh, relevant and competitive in the marketplace. And so everybody from the very lowest person in the organization to the very top person in the organization had access to all information available to the company. And it was fascinating because it was a lot of stuff to digest at first, but when you got used to it and you started to see that rapid information coming in, it just made such a difference to your ability to, you, you still felt like you were using intuition, but it was actually intuition based on a lot of insight and, and information. Uh, and I think that's where we as uh, board members should start thinking more about how do we sort of infuse uh, more data into the environment uh, through digital experiences so that we can be very rapid fire in our decision making uh, and, and knowledge about the world that we live in. Great, thank you. Are there any governance level digital transformation education programs you would recommend for a board director? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I don't have any recommendations off the top of my head, but it's certainly something that I'd love to, to investigate and I can send to, to Red. Is, uh, I think that's, that is very important. It's a, it's a topic and I almost suspect that there probably isn't a ton of digital governance programs out there. So maybe an opportunity to to adapt and evolve a new business model. Perfect, perfect. Uh, what is the rate of success in digital transformation? I was reading an article recently where McKinsey said about a third of digital uh, transformation initiatives are successful. And this is part of the reason why I spent so much time talking about digital transformation, what it is and it isn't. Uh, we get ourselves into a speed wobble thinking, oh, let's just go for cloud. I mean, how many times have we actually been in organizations where we've seen cloud migra migrations happen with this idea that the reason why we're doing it is because we need to be more cost efficient. Uh, and yet, if two thirds of all digital transformation experiences do not succeed or meet the target objectives, then clearly we need to be making how uh, this, this digital transformation initiative uh, process goes. Uh, and so hopefully uh, the, the takeaway is this is not technology for technology's sake. This is an entire uh, restructuring of how we think about uh, our business and, and the way we do business going forward. And, and I think that will help to accelerate the, the success of, of digital transformations. And hopefully we can change that statistic <laughs> from third being successful to a third, not being successful. Perfect. This process can easily get complicated. How do you maintain a simple approach to adopting digital capabilities? Yeah, so I think uh, I alluded to that a little bit in our discussion and that you know, digital transformation does not need to be uh, every single aspect of your business. Pick one, it's kind of the, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Pick one area, really focus on making sure that you've got all of the ingredients in your digital transformation in that area and expand beyond there. You do want to get to the point where you have that interconnection, you have that integration stuff. But as I noted, sometimes you're going to have legacy uh, environments that you're just not going to be able to, to remediate and figuring out a way to connect with those legacy environments and not sort of growing everything out uh, is really important. Uh, so it's, it's you know, aligning to particular areas and improving those areas, but also making sure that you have timings to the other areas. Too often what we do is we say, hey, we have to go and innovate. So let's, let's create a separate environment. Let's um, build out a new product, but then migrating the customer to the new product or you know, having that cultural uh, effect of, I'm a, I'm a legacy person versus I'm an innovation person that has too much of a, a negative impact to our organizations. 
So making sure that we're small, nimble, connected is probably the best approach. Okay. We're going to end with one last question here. What advice would you give a board beginning a digital transformation initiative? Yeah, so I, I think the, the most important thing is to think about what type of business model changes you want to make the digital transformation. So again, this isn't a technology uh, shift. This is a business shift. And how is that going to impact the organization? looking at what other companies are doing, how other companies are, are migrating, and thinking about the non-traditional threats that will happen as a result of shift in, in the business model. So if we just put blinkers on, we say, hey, we are a retail shop with you know, brick and mortar stores. How do we just connect our customers online? That's gonna keep you very, very focused. But if you start to think about what, what is the impact of becoming a e-commerce environment uh, and shifting the business model related to that. I think that's the most important thing. It's also probably the most difficult thing. So uh, it's it's the first step, but it's certainly a challenging um, concept to, to, to affect. The other piece I would say, and it goes back to what we were talking about in terms of the, you know, the transition during the pandemic from a very in-person um, uh, experience to more of a digital experience, taking those sort of micro steps in adopting digital and demonstrating uh, sort of your willingness to evolve uh, in more of a digital mindset is, is also very important because it sends those signals, it starts the culture shift, it starts the behavior shift. And I think that along with really challenging the business model change will help to bring it all together. Hmm. Perfect. I'm going to ask you a personal question. Yeah. <laughs> what initially ignited you to be so passionate about digital uh, transformation? What started you off in this field? So it was actually many years ago, uh, we were in the throes of a pretty large technology migration. Uh, and it became very evident to me that this migration was not going to go anywhere but south. Uh, and, and I just thought, you know, why, why is this? We, we, we have to evolve. We have to move from mainframes to um, you know, websites. We, we have to be able to progress this. And we can't be just bogged down by all of our technology. And this was in the days when I was uh, a thoroughbred technologist developing uh, software and stuff. And, and I started to, to look and observe what other companies were doing and how they were bringing their employees along and getting their employees to appreciate sort of the evolution that they were going to have to go through in their skill sets and mindset and the business processes and how those had to evolve and stuff. And it just became a really fascinating, complex problem to, to deal with. Something much more interesting than just, hey, I'm going to move from a, you know, mainframe environment to a client server environment or a client server environment to a web environment, this became so multifaceted and such a challenging, interesting exercise that I thought this is something I want to be doing on an ongoing basis. And what's interesting is that was many, many years ago. Uh, and yet we still kind of grapple with the same problem, different technologies, obviously, but you know, now we're grappling with artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, mobility, and cloud. Uh, but the same challenges keep coming up. How do we help our employees move forward? How do we help them embrace the change, be excited about it, learn and evolve? Uh, how do we make sure that our processes don't get bogged down? I can't believe the bureaucracy that ends up happening in the company because they've just carried along these processes for years and years and years uh, while the technology has shifted. And now the, the employee is the one Supporting themselves, trying to meet the legacy uh, legacy process with the new technology capability, we keep forgetting that it takes all of these ingredients to really initiate digital transformation. And so it continues to be a very uh, interesting uh, and exciting area to, to delve into. That's great. It's always interesting to hear how someone gets into their business. 
Well, we're going to move to our farewell slide, <laughs> Robin. So if you would like to just share that one with us and we can go through that as well. And we'll start from there. All right, here we go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. There we go. Perfect. So um, there we go. Excellent. So of course, I want to thank you, Robin, for all the information. And, and it was really, really interesting to hear everything you had to say about this topic. And the questions were great, too. So to further informate, for further information about Shaperancy, you can go to www.shaperancy.com. That is where you get that free 14-day test drive if you want to, to if you haven't already. Um, no credit card required is just to use it in your unique environment and do that. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is that you can enroll in global uh, in our global board education and certification course that is hosted by our education partner. And for that, you go to shapeparency.com slash board education. And just a little side note, Robin is a holder of this certification as well. So very cool. So do go and check that out if you are interested in that additional global board education. And for information on our upcoming events, you can go to shapeparency.com slash events. And that is where you found, find already, I think this afternoon or tomorrow, you will have the next event for March. And it's going to be really great as well. So that is all that we had for today. Of course, thank you for joining us again, Robin, for sharing everything with us. And from me and the entire Shapeancy team, have a great rest of your day and see you again soon. Bye now.